Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about where you should cut your variegated monstera so you don't end up with highly variegated plants like this one or very sport plants like this one. So on both of these plants I had up here, I made a mistake. I took a cutting and left this node behind. What I cut off was a variegated top cut, which is awesome. But what I left behind was a chunk of stem with part of it being marbled and the other part of it being green. But before I cut it, I didn't check where the auxiliary bud was gonna be and it came out on the green side of the plant. And hence, I have a three-leafed green monstera. But you can see that the stem did come from an albo monstera. Same exact thing happened here, but the opposite. I cut off a top cutting here that was highly marbled, but what I left behind was a stem that I didn't inspect where the auxiliary bud was coming out of. And it happened to be coming out of an all white part of the stem. This little sliver of the stem happens to be all white and that's where the bud lined up at. I have a very white shoot coming out of here and I have some chance of having some green on these new leaves, but of the three leaves that have come out, they're almost all white. Whereas you can see the original was a nice blend of white, minty green, and nice deep green there. And also browning on full white leaves is completely normal. I keep it about 65, 70% humidity in here, and that will actually kind of expedite the degradation of these albino leaves. And I do that to kind of compromise between the philodendrons, anthuriums, and monsteras in here. Ideally, I'd keep this between 55 and 60%. So before you get your scissors out and start cutting your monstera, look at where the auxiliary bud is coming out of. And it's if it's not coming out of the right side at that node that you have, let it grow an additional node so that you potentially Eventually will have a different rotation of that auxiliary bud. Typically they tend to rotate and kind of will spin the stem throughout their life cycle. So I'm going to demonstrate the cutting process and examination of where the auxiliary bud is on this cutting of this plant that we know goes very white. So you have to be careful with that stem because about 40% of that 360 degree stem is white. So I don't want to run into this again. We have the root cap coming out of the adventitious root right there. And if you go down one node, that's the node that's gonna grow next after I cut it. So if I cut just under this root, this little eye or pimple or nipple or whatever you wanna call this, this is an auxiliary bud that will grow next. Now it's crucial that I cut there and not below it because if I cut below it, then that eye is gonna grow next and it's on a completely white part of the stem. So again, I'm gonna go to the line of the node where the root is, go a little bit down below, kinda go in between, make sure I'm not cutting at the bud. You can see the bud there and just slice. So now I have my cutting with a shoot already coming out. I actually don't like to cut them while the shoot's coming out like this. I like to have the newest leaf kind of tucked back away in the sleeve and I definitely don't want it to be in the process of unfurling because I found once you cut it, it kind of stops unfurling and it becomes kind of a wonky, weird leaf. So as I said, this is the bud that's going to grow. It's on a bit of a blurry part of a green and white marbled section of the stem and that's what I want because that's gonna create more marbled leaves. And if you rotate from this one, you get to that white one that I was talking about, that if I cut one more notch down, down to the next node, it would encourage that shoot to grow and that shoot is going to be all white. So I know this is a very specific trick, but it's very important when you're cutting variegated monstera. These are all very expensive plants and you don't want to make the wrong cut. And I've done this a few times, so now I need to double check my work and always make sure I know where that, that auxiliary bud is at to make sure I'm gonna have good coloring on that next part of the stem. And if you don't see it or it's on an all green and an all white part of the stem, then you're going to need to wait because you'll get all green or all white leaves. Ideally, on the half moon varieties, you'll have that line smack dab right up the center and that will create sectoral variegation like this. This plant has put out five half moons in a row. And it's just been kind of like a luck of the draw that the line has been set up on the stem appropriately and it splits it right down the middle instead of putting an all white leaf or an all green leaf. But I can expect maybe in a couple years this plant will then get to the white part of the stem and just start putting out all white leaves or all green leaves temporarily as it rotates through that stem. It's kind of a bit of a spiral pattern as a plant goes around. I'm not sure if this plant follows the Fibonacci sequence, but most plants tend to space the leaves apart so that they never overlap and they 
absorb as much light as possible. Thanks you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope you did enjoy it. And if you did, please click the like button down below. It's free to you and it helps us out. And if you want to come back every Saturday for another houseplant tip or trick about rare plants, click subscribe and we'll see you next Saturday. Have a good day.